Hello everyone. Oh, the I thought you'd jump in with a little hi. No, 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 no. That was that was perfect. Hello guys and welcome to the uh the Classified Podcast. <laughs> My name is Hal and as always I'm joined by Joe, that's me. I'm I'm the other person. The other person. Um thanks for joining us again for season 2 of the Classified Podcast. Um I'm excited to be here as always. Yep. And by here I mean in a different place to you. Yep, and I'm excited to be here, the same place I have been for the past year. Yeah, hey, 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 it's still happening. Still locked down. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so how are you today, Joe? Oh, you know, I'm all right. I am I'm pumped because yep. we've just we've just pushed this recording back a bit. So, um, let's date this immediately <laughs> um, because we've just watched uh, the Perseverance rover land on Mars. He persevered, didn't he? He persevered. He got through. Um, he got through the atmosphere. He he did a parachute. He did a little land. Yeah. I understood at least ten percent of what was happening, but mm. a room full of people clapped, and it made me feel really happy. And everyone was so excited. Everyone was so ex- Everyone was so excited, but couldn't touch each other. Yeah. A lot of air. It was just hugs, a room full of people going. Of air fives. Ah, ooh, ooh, ah, oh, I want to. Yeah. Ooh. Pretty yeah. sure. Pretty sure two of them uh, saw two people fist bump, and then immediately ooh. go. Oh, maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> they, they fist bump and then panic hand sand. <laughs> <laughs> the pan hand sand. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm riding a high. Okay, well, how about I bring you straight back down to a low? Take me right down. Yeah. Dash my hopes and dreams. Exactly. It's time for a rant. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's my turn to have a rant. And your uh, your our choice of words then was very very fitting. I am about to uh, to bring you down because Ooh. bring us bring us both right down because uh, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna have a rant about today affects us all. Mm-hmm. We've all been victim of it. Mm-hmm. We've uh, we're, we're all at its at its whim, at its right. mercy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that is, of course, the male- malevolent... I was about to say malevolent, but that's not a word. <laughs> that is the uh, malevolent demigod that is gravity. Oh, we're really... Mm. We're ranting about gravity. Yes, because... The thing that just helped to rover land on Mars. Yeah, that thing. Right. But, I cannot wait to see what the hell you've got to complain about because the fundamental force of gravity. Because fuck gravity. <laughs> Talk o- to me, how Over the course of the past week... Mm-hmm. I have because I mean the thing is is about about gravity right yeah I get it's kind of important it holds our <laughs> atmosphere in place it stops us from floating away into space like the opposite of perseverance yep, um, yep. you know the, the, it holds the sea in place all that kind of thing the it moon, does the moon's gravity gives us tide I get it it's important right mm-hmm. but do you know what else it's an abusive relationship because I keep knocking glasses over. And you know what happens when that happens? <laughs> the other night, I knocked over a glass. If there was no gravity, the liquid would have just floated up and I'd be like, oh, oh come back, come back. Instead, an entire glass of water emptied into my de- uh, bedside table drawer. And trying to dry <laughs> the inside of a drawer is one of the most difficult things I had to do last week. And I'm still bitter about it. And we 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 were gonna. Um, I was having a quite about. Uh, we were gonna record. Uh, originally, we were gonna record a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. um, but I had a, a colossal headache. I I really thought you were gonna say. I, I know I told you I had a massive headache the other day, but that my drawer was so wet, Joe. I just couldn't do it. I did have a colossal headache, but during the day, I knocked over a can of Dr Pepper on my desk, and mm. again. If it weren't for gravity, it would have been a nice, easy, <laughs> nice, easy clear up. But no. How many times, Joe? Yes. Would you say in the past year you've fallen yes. over? That's an interesting question because I think the answer is probably zero, based on the fact that I've barely moved for the past year. It is something that I used mm. to. Yeah, as that's a, a good point. As a kid, I like really constantly like I would wear through my school trousers. Um, I'd go through like six pairs in a year because I'd, the knees would be all torn because I'd just be walking along minding my own business and then face plant the floor. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so, but I seem to have grown out of that slightly. How many, why? Where are you going with this? How many times have you fallen over in the past year? I mean, actually, you, you raised a very good point. In the past year, no one's really moved. So uh, <laughs> there's been a lot, a significantly lot less falling over. Mm. But on an average year, it would be quite a yep. few times. Now imagine what would happen if you were to trip and stumble, but then nothing would mm -hmm. happen. You'd just float. In a world without gravity. Not without gravity. Right. Just it's, There's too little, much gravity. Too much. And it's, it's a little bit less would be nice. You if don't want the gravity gone. No. You just want fewer. Fewer gravity, yes. Right. If it could just just, just, just back off for a bit, okay? You, you're doing mm -hmm. my nut in. Is there such thing as a zeroth world problem? Because you've exceeded a first world problem there, Hal. Is that a problem in space? Yes, uh, that is a thing. I'm but then it's not. A, but then gravity is not a problem in space, at least not as much. I mean, the problem in space is that there is no gravity. You've seen the film Gravity. Gravity's scary when there's no gravity. No, the pro well, hang on. The problem with in the film Gravity is the fact that there is gravity because they're hurtling towards Aye. Earth. And I've never I seen took a gravity. big swing and a miss. I've not seen the film Gravity. <laughs> Neither have I, and I can tell you that. You know, oh, in the film Gravity, guess who the titular villain is, Joe? It's, it's gravity. gravity. It's Sandra Bullock. No, that's the protagonist. Oh, Come no. on, don't be daft. Really, okay. have not seen this film. <laughs> it's George Clooney. <laughs> playing, playing Gravity. Yeah, I think uh, mm -hmm. if it could just, just, just calm down so that every time I go up the stairs, I don't fall up them. If I fell up the stairs without gravity, I'd just kind of carry on going up the stairs. Has it occurred to you at any point that maybe the problem isn't the fundamental force that holds together the universe and maybe that you're a little bit clumsy? You know, it's crossed my mind, <laughs> but then that would be admitting fault. True, true. A yeah. dangerous practice. A dangerous practice, because then it's a slippery slope. Do you know what else makes slippery slopes bad, Joe? <laughs> Gravity. Oh, he sets them up and he knocks them back. <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, I, I can't think I've ever had a, a point in my life where I've specifically been like, oh man, I wish there was less gravity in this situation. Can you imagine how fun games like tennis and badminton and that lot would be like with less gravity? You, well, the courts would have to be way bigger though, wouldn't they? Oh yeah. That's, that's using up real estate. But it would be fun to watch. It would be great fun to watch. Can you imagine, imagine basketball. Can you imagine like absolutely hoofing a shuttlecock? And then you actually mm -hmm. having to inform NASA that they they have an extra <laughs> <laughs> have an extra extra satellite in play. That would be amazing. What do you reckon the most fun um, low grav sport would be? Uh, synchronized swimming. An excellent choice. I was going ski jump. Ski jump. <laughs> no, they'd have to rebrand it. It would have to be ski launch. <laughs> Can you imagine a bobsled if, like, they go around a corner a bit rubbish and just go straight up the uh, side, <laughs> and then it's just gone? It's just you a missile. Send missile. the search party out. Yeah. Yeah. You see? <laughs> see? A little bit less gravity. The world is a much more interesting place. <laughs> it would be more interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm sure there'd be zero problems that would arise from that. Mm hmm Yeah, I'm fine. Who do needs to petition? Let's make the world less gravitational. Yep. Is that it? I'm fine with the way that I said that. Yeah. Um, so that you stop knocking over. Um, if I could water. just stop knocking over liquids on hard services, <laughs> the world will be a better place. <laughs> if I can go just one week without having to, having to somehow dehydrate my furniture. I I realised that we literally had to pause the podcast last week because I spilled water all over my desk. See. But, that's the only time that that's happened in a very long time for me. How often are you knocking things over? <laughs> like, just this week. When you say every week. At least this week it's been twice. <laughs> my uh, my leg fell asleep the other day while I, I had my legs up. Um, and I had to go run to the door to answer the doorbell. Um, and you know what it's like when you, you try and walk on a dead leg? It doesn't quite work. In oh, yeah. And you just kind of stumble all over the place. Yeah, I fell down the stairs. Um, like properly, I mean, I, I slid, but it wasn't. Okay, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't comfortable. I'll tell you that. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, if there'd been less gravity, I would have just kind of. Oh well, this is a bit. It's a bit. You would have kind of ooh, floaty hopped. Yeah. Oh, oh, better, better sit myself back down. That could have been a bit. Oh, if there were more gravity, that would have been horrible, because it was. 
Yeah, no, that that's fair enough. I mean, I do understand that there is a flip side to this. If there was... So, I think I've told you about this before, but a few years ago, um, I I had this dream, okay? Yes. And I guess we'll end my rant on this, because this this is this is the uh, the flip side. Um, mm. This is this is how scary no gravity could be. So I had this dream, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like a zombie zombie apocalypse. Okay. Yes. But instead of zombies, mm-hmm. it was packs, right? Hunting, I'm sorry, it was what? Hunting packs, right? Right. Of killer balloons. <laughs> you have told me this, but I'd forgotten that was a dream you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> what these what these balloons would do is they'd hunt in packs so imagine you know a giant uh, like a smaller version of the the house from up like a normal yeah, okay normal mm-hmm. bunch of balloons they'd float around like that and if they got too close to you they got you by turning off the gravity and you just ah. float away yeah and you just and you disappear you you're off into space you're off into space and that that is that's honestly that's terrifying that's genuinely terrifying that is that is terrifying yeah so you, if, could, you could write a horror film out of that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea, and um, the idea, I was, I was obviously the protagonist of this, of your own dream, of my own dream. Funny narcissist. Enough. Um, uh, narcissist. <laughs> yeah, it's not happened since. I'm usually just, the, uh, <laughs> I'm usually just lost and confused. Um, yeah, so I was the protagonist of this this horror story because because I smoked and I had a mm-hmm. I had a lighter, right? And you can pop mm. balloons with lighters. So you were the only person in this scenario that had any chance of popping balloons. Exactly. Because you could get very, very close to them with a lighter. Yep. No um, other way of doing it. Yeah. Because obviously they had to hunt in packs because one balloon wasn't strong enough to make you float away. So as you popped each right. balloon in these little packs of balloons, the gravity would turn back on and you'd slowly come back down. So Right. So the effect would be weaker yeah. if there's fewer balloons there. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was going around hunting these hunting packs of balloons and, and popping them. And saving the world. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm still to this day tempted to submit that to uh, to WB mm-hmm. or or Universal. Um, right, that's screenplay. Yeah, that's. I think it's um, could call it the the floating dead. Yeah, I like it. I yeah. like it. Or um, um, day of the red balloons. That works. That works really well. Yeah. Um. I'll come back to you when I've got a good pun. I'm, I'm <laughs> racking my brains coming up with balloon puns right now. <laughs> oh, dear. Helium razor. It's like Hellraiser, but it's helium, and it raises... It, work, it, it works it, on a few levels, only if you explain it. Yeah, <laughs> the best kind of pun. <laughs> okay, there's, that's my rant. I'm done. I'm done, am, I'm done ranting f- about gravity. It's an awful, awful force of nature that we are caught <laughs> in an abusive manipulative relationship because obviously we need it to survive but mm-hmm, it knocks mm-hmm. you when you're down and you're down anyway because gravity got you because gravity yeah no you've sold me less gravity the better we'll write that petition yeah I don't, don't know, know who we send it to gotta have the right balance and we haven't got it at the moment oh, just turn it a bit down shall we just micro gravity down. that's where it's at okay yeah we'll make it happen yep and uh with that then let's uh let's learn you a thing Cal. Ooh. Learning. We've uh, I've got a doozy for you today. Okay, um, we're excited. revisiting some old favourites. We've got um, we've got a bit of conspiracy. We've got a bit of um, a fun science thing. We've got some films, TV. We've got some snacks. I'm gonna start you off right with two bags of crisps. Okay. Scenario: You've got two bags of crisps in front of you. Yeah. Two bags of Walker's crisps. There's a green packet. And there's a blue packet. Okay. What flavour are those crisps? So the green is salt and vinegar, blue is cheese and onion. That is incorrect. For a Walker's packet of crisps... A Walker's green packet is ch- of crisps. A Walker's packet of crisps, green is cheese and onion, and blue is salt and vinegar. But that wasn't always the case. In it? the mid-80s, um, as I'm sure you remember, and th- th- people talk about this all the time. Yep. Um... But Walkers changed their um, their branding round. They they originally were the kind of universally acknowledged 
blue cheese and onion, green salt and vinegar. Mm-hmm. And then they uh, swapped their swapped their packaging around. There was a big hoo-ha about it. It was around the time where Pepsi took over the company. Um, there was a, an advert that, that people fondly remember um, that showed two football teams swapping jerseys um, with, a, with a blue and green one. Um, yeah. they, since this happened, uh, another crisp company, Golden Wonder, who before Walkers were on the scene were like the big crisp company in, in the UK, Yep. Uh, they've launched a petition to uh, to standardise the packets back to the original, um, the the correct way round of the green and blue. Yeah. Um, because it's confusing to the market, um, and so they've they've done that since Walkers have um, have changed their colours. So hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm-hmm. Blue is cheese and onion. Blue is salt and vinegar. If you're Walkers. What are you? Did I write down the wrong thing? I think you wrote down the wrong thing because I'm looking at the Tesco's website as we speak at a packet of blue cheese and onion crisps from Walkers. This is so confusing. Wait, what? It's. I think it's the other way around. I think it, you, you got it the wrong way around because I know for a fact Golden Wonder, green is cheese and onion, blue is salt and vinegar, and Walkers do it the other Wait, way around. No, I need. I need to fix this because I ate a <laughs> green pack of salt and vinegar. What? But was Walkers? it? Was, yeah, green cheese pack of salt and, and vinegar. And, yeah. No, it wasn't Walkers. Oh. Walker's cheese and onion is blue. Yep. But I've written on my thing <laughs> that it's green. And it's the other way around. For it's the other way around. Yeah. See, this is so confusing because clearly I've got it wrong in my notes. The point still stands, though. Yes, you are right in the fact that there is walkers are the opposite of the standard of everything you- else. Yes, actually, I do have a, a note here. I, I have written it down wrong. You are correct. It should be green is cheese and onion, blue is salt and vinegar. The rest of the points yes. that I've made still stand, but the colours are different. Here's the twist in the story. Yep. That didn't happen. Walkers have always had the same colour crisps going back into history. Right. But a massive number of people remember this very specific thing happening around the same time. Are we doing the Mandala the- effect? We're doing the Mandela effect. Hot down. He's, he's nailed it. We're, we're, we're heading straight for it there. So people, people remember this, mm-hmm. um, I, including you, obviously... You, you mm-hmm. described the, the advert of the footballers sw- swapping. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I instantly could picture that. Yeah, same. Yeah. This, this is the same thing happened to me. Um, so we'll, uh, if you're not familiar with the Mandela effect, um, it's a... Obviously you are, but for our listeners at home, uh, it's a term that was coined in 2009 by someone called Fiona Broom. Uh, she was at a conference um, discussing with people at the conference the tragedy of Nelson Mandela's death in prison in the 80s. Um, except, of course, that didn't happen. Yep. Uh, Mandela didn't die until 2013. He was released from prison and was a president of South Africa for um, for five years, 94 to 99. Yep. Um, but... A bunch of people could remember with very specific details, remember it being televised in the 80s, and including like details like a speech from his widow. Mm-hmm. So these, these things happen. And back to the, the crisp situation, the included in the people that are certain that this happened are not only Golden Wonder, their chief competition, but also Gary Lineker, yep. who has been the face of Walkers since uh, the early 90s. Yeah. Um, like... It's just, it's a thing, and, like, people will very, like, vehemently... Is that a word? I'm going with it. Vehemently, Um, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Wrong context, I'm going to use it anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, Defend your stance. There's there's forum boards, belligerently we'll go for. Yeah. Um, There's forum boards all over the internet of people discussing these these very specific details of these very specific conspiracies of things that happened but didn't. Yeah. Um... So I've got a couple other examples of you that I think are really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the movie Shazam. We all know the mo- the movie Shazam. Um, if I say Shazam to you, what's the movie that pops into your head? I don't know the movie, but I'm sure you're going to tell me about the movie Kazam, featuring. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm not going to talk about is the movie Kazam. Featuring Shaquille O'Neal, released in 1996. I'm talking about the movie Shazam, mm-hmm. 
Um, same spelling with two A's at the end, which was a cheesy 90s movie featuring the American stand-up comedian Sinbad <laughs> as an incompetent genie who granted wishes to two young children. Um, the details on this one, this is like, this is one of the big ones. People are so convinced that this movie exists. Yeah. Um, that there's accounts from someone who used to help to run a rental store who remembers specific details that there were two copies of this film in the rental store. They remember it specifically because people would rent it and bring it back and say there's a problem with the tape, so they had to rewatch it repeatedly to check for damage on the tape. They remember details in the film that there's two children who accidentally summon a genie. Uh, they try to wish for their dad to fall in love again after their mother's passing, but Sinbad, you can't grant the wish. The little girl wishes for a broken doll to be fixed. The finale takes place at a pool party. And there's a cover of the VHS, has a purple background, said Sinbad at the top in big letters. He's dressed as a genie, facing left with his arms crossed. Right. Like, that is intricate detail. It happens that a lot of those really, really closely line up with the 96 movie Kazam, featuring Shaquille O'Neal, including a purple-faced VHS, with Shaq in massive letters at the top. Him yep. dressed as a genie, facing to the left with his arms crossed. Mm-hmm. Um, the argument is that both movies exist and it's a case of twin films like um, Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down Right. the two films with the same plot released at the same time uh, Ants and A Bug Life or Deep Impact and Armageddon yep uh-huh. um, I mean those films are you know spitting images of each other apart from the casting and a really interesting thing in their own right but yep. this is not a case of that no nope. Unless it is. Do continue. Um, so I'm going to do you a um, I'm going to do you a quick quiz. Okay. On the Mandela effect, we love a quiz. We do love a quiz, and this is interesting. So I've um, just before we go into the quiz. So yeah, I've, yeah, please do. I've come across the Mandela effect before. Um, right. One of my f- favorite YouTubers of all time is a guy called Internet Comment et- uh, Internet mm-hmm. Comment Etiquette, and. He does he does videos about these kind of phenomenons and obviously mm-hmm. focuses on the comment section um, and basically um, yeah, yeah. kind of criticizes and, and expands upon you know comments in those sections. But he's done a video on the Mandela effect. Uh, one of the examples he gave was Kazam Shazam. Yeah, it's, yep. it's a really famous one um, in you know certain circles of people who remember terrible '90s kids films. Yeah. Another interesting tidbit about the, the, the its namesake, the Mandela thing. It's, yeah. There is a book that dis- mm-hmm. uh, talks about and references the death of Mandela. Um, yeah. And a lot of people who support kind of the more, uh, oh, there is definitely something here right, at play, yeah. um, saying, well, look at this book. Why would this book exist? And it's because it's a book of um, hypothetical fictional essays written by school children in North Af- uh, South Africa. Right, okay. Yep. But that that was a book about the death of Mandela published before he died. Yeah. There's something there, huh? I'm just saying there's yeah, something yeah. there. But uh, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in this on Mandela, go and find that video because it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I, I'm sure we'll go into uh, much better detail than I have in my little bit of research here. It's well, something that really fascinates me because I love something where there's such an obvious answer to a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are people out there who are like, it's alternate universes that overlap. It's alternate universes. It's it's a parallel world. It's um, I've just written in my notes here, Illuminati and massive letters. <laughs> I didn't read further into that. I saw the word Illuminati and figured that's good enough for me. It's not at all that people are very, very susceptible to other people's opinions and uh-huh. shared, uh, what's the word? Cultural memories are a thing. And sometimes your memories are a bit fucky. Memories are they're so fucky as a as a concept. Mm. Like false memories are, are such a weird thing. Like I have um I, I, everyone does. Mm-hmm. Um like I can remember really, really clear moments of my childhood. Yeah. Which like when I talk to like my parents about it, um like there's there's a story of me as a kid, um where I disappeared from the dining table at one point and reappeared with one of the kitchen cabinet doors that I'd yanked off, dragging it behind me. Right. Um, which is something that I remember really clearly, except every single detail in my head is wrong about like the positioning of the table, what what the doors looked like, what the house looked like at that time, because I was really young. Yeah. Um, probably the fact that I could remember it at all because I was young enough to not be able to remember things like that. Yeah. But 
ev- every detail is wrong, but the memory is there because I've been told that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same as you've not seen that Walker's advert. Mm-hmm. Um, even though even though I told you that was in the mid eighties, um, you still were like, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you obviously would have seen a random advert from ten or so years before you were born. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I did exactly the same thing. Um, and as soon as you hear that little nugget of information, it creates a memory mm. around it, uh, which I think is completely fascinating. Yeah, brains are fickle, stupid things. They're so dumb. and Like, they're so smart, but so <laughs> rubbish at their job. <laughs> um, Great way of putting it. I know. So, do you want a, do you want a little quiz? Should we do the quiz? Yeah. I've, I've just, it's just a little one of just a, f- a few other examples of this. I want to see if you can give me the correct answer. Okay. Um, obviously, they're all a bit leading questions. Mm-hmm. But if you can give me your honest answer, not the, uh, this is probably not this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, could you describe the main features of the Monopoly Man? If you just, just you picture the Monopoly Man in your, in your head, what does he, what does he look like? What is he, what's okay. he about? I can, but oh, I'll, I, I, trying to avoid what you said not to do, but my brain automatically. Yeah, but you've automatically done it, right? Automatically pictured the the Pringlesman, um, right? So, and, and honestly, brain is trying to struggle differentiating mm-hmm. the two. But I'll start with. So he's wearing a black suit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Top, top hat. Top hat. Uh, monocle. Not sure about the monocle. No monocle. No. That's the that is your answer. Yeah. Um, everyone assumes that the Monopoly man is wearing a monocle, but he's not wearing a monocle. No, it's it's the the peanut guy, the peanut, Mister Peanut. Or that would be the one. This, this is always the case. There's always something that is really similar. Yeah. Um, does he have a mustache? He does have a mustache, but so does the Pringles man, and now I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm pretty certain he has a mustache. Yeah, he's got to have a mustache. Let's have. Oh, this this will be a good test to see whether you you done. You done did you see? Yeah, he's got a mustache. He's got a mustache. Okay, cool. an almost identical mustache to the Pringlesman. Yeah, they're very similar characters. Yeah, but yeah, you're um, right. No, no monocle. No monocle on Monopoly, man. Uh, here's one you should know the answer to. Uh, what color is the tip of Pikachu's tail? Yellow. Yeah, it is yellow. Yeah. A lot of people think that it's black tipped. No, that's his ears. That's his ears, and it's the base, base of his of tail, tail is a yeah. different, is a, is a darker shade. But yeah, that's another one. Um, if you're at the vending machine and you're, you're picking up a snack, um, you've got yourself a Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. How are you spelling Kit Kat? Is there a hyphen in between the two words? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't like Kit Kats. Pic- picture it in your head. What does the wrapper look like? I'm going to go with no. No is correct. There isn't. But right. again, a lot of people think there is. Here's a weird one. What colour is chartreuse? The colour chartreuse. <laughs> I have no fucking clue. Because this, this is a really weird one. It's either a shade of green or a shade of pink. Right. So my brain and hearing that 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 went to a, like a turquoise. As does a lot of people. Mm. It's a shade of green. I have no idea what that one's about. But yeah. that's, that's apparently an, another big thing that people do not know what this colour is. Well, I mean... I think the reason why I went to to turquoise is because puce okay. is a pink. Wait. Oh, here's another one that's just me then. I always forget what colour turquoise is and think it's a shade of pink. No, as soon as you said that again, I was like, no, that's a bluey green. Yeah, that's a bluey green, yeah. Um, so in which case you were right. It's yeah, kind of okay, yeah. bluey green, yeah. <laughs> but I, I immediately... I'm not sure if that's not a Mandela effect thing, I guess. But I've always just, for some reason, thought that turquoise was pink. No, that might just be me. Just um, turquoise, like turtle and aqua and porpoises. Is this how you think of every colour? Is this how you remember <laughs> what colours are? Do you have to put parts of the word together and link them to... Is that not how you do it? I mean, I clearly don't have any system. Yell, yellow, like yell, like the sun. The sun yells at you, but in heat. The sun yells at you. Yeah, a- And no, then you're ow, right. because the sun hot and hot, hot hurts. That's you've got it. Yellow like the sun, the angry yelly hot hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you've nailed it. This is yeah. This is a genius system. Green like grass, orange like. No, it's a tough one. Nothing yeah. rhymes with orange. 
Yeah, I don't Come know back to me on that. Some Something will make sense there. Yeah. The orange um, is oh, like it's some sort of... There's, mm. Orange is like an O, like a like a round, like a basketball. <sighs> yeah, or like an orange. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, like that's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, what colour is C-3PO? I know you're not a massive Star Wars man, but you've seen the films. Well... You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the bait. He's gold. One of his legs is silver. Is it? Always, always has been. I wouldn't have known that. I know. No one knows that. I know he's got a red arm in uh, one of the newer ones, but yeah, which is really dumb, just to sell more toys. Yeah, but I, um, yeah, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, um, quite. It's just like really, um, obviously well-known image, but yeah, it's just different to what most people think. Mm. Um, I've got a little section here of uh, movie quotes that tends to fall into the same thing. Yep. Um, obviously, misquoted movies. You're a bit of a movie buff, so I'm expecting you to nail all these. Okay. And I know um, some of the obvious ones, so I'm hoping you've got I think you'll probably field. know know some of the really obvious ones. I've tried not to pick the necessarily the, the very most obvious ones, but I think I probably have anyway. Okay. Um, so I think the, the most obvious one is... Um, how does Darth Vader tell Luke Skywalker about his parentage? Uh, he definitely, definitely says, Luke, I am your... No, it's, it's no, I am your father. <laughs> it's no, I am your father. Yeah. Uh, but everyone thinks it's the other thing. Yeah. Um, in in Snow White, what does the queen say to the mirror? Magic mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the wall. You're nailing these so far. Mm. Um, can you give me a famous line from Silence of the Lambs that's uh, really creepily spoken by Hannibal Lecter? I was trying to think of a way to phrase this one. Yeah. Uh, and then I ate his liver. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's one of them. But he, uh, at no point in Silence of the Lambs does he say, hello, Clarice. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not in the film at all. I haven't seen um, that all the way through, though. I need to, or... Anyway. I'm not sure I have, actually. Yeah. I'm not, I should watch Silence of the Lambs. I know it's, I know it's a really it. good film, and I'm pretty sure I've seen some of it. But actually thinking about it, I don't think I've seen it all the way through. Oh, well, there you go. There's your, there's your weekend plans. Yeah. Yay. Um, similarly to that, uh, at no point in any of um, Arthur Conan Doyle's work, or in, I think in any of the films, does Sherlock Holmes say, Elementary, my dear Watson. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, those lines just are never never written, but for some reason people think it's the, the yeah. thing. Um, and the other one I've got is, uh, what's Forrest Gump got to say about chocolates? Ah, uh, Okay. I think this one I might actually get wrong. So I know the quote is, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. The It's a bit of a sneaky one here, but it's life was like a box of chocolates. Just a bit of a misquote. Oh, uh, okay. That's not too um, bad. But, but yeah, that like, obviously, you're, if you know what you if you know what you're doing and you've, um, and you care at all, then you probably know the answers to all those. But a lot of people mis, uh, misremember it, which is all the same mm. kind of thing as a, as a false memory. Um, so I hope just... I hope to add a little bit more to this then. So I'm I gonna... would I would love you to because my notes are running very thin at this point. Okay, so let's go back to a couple of those quotes. So this yeah, is again it. going back to uh, Insect Command blah, 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 video. Yeah, yeah. So he also did a very similar thing where he went over Excellent. movie quotes and then also kind of managed to find some instances where it could have suggestions where it could have come from or where it oh, could right, have. Yeah. So uh, Luke, I am your father. Yep. There is a um, Simpsons parody of Star Wars. Right. And in that, the character who plays Darth Vader, I think it's Dr. Hibbert or something like that, mm-hmm. says, mm-hmm. Luke, I am your father. And obviously, that's another cultural input. Yeah. Um, so I would assume that that went back as far as the original film's release. It's hard to say, isn't it? Because it's yeah. it's it's one of those cultural things that is just it's an it's a, a cultural anomaly. So, yeah, and that's all that these really are, aren't they? They're just cultural. Yes, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other one was there. So, magic mirror on the wall. It's mm. mirror mirror on the wall in Shrek. Right, but that one definitely goes pre Shrek. Yeah, and in the early nineties, there was a rap song by I can't remember who. And I can't remember what it was called, mm-hmm. but in that rap song, they go mirror, mirror on the wall. Okay, well, there you go. But I think that 
possibly would already have been an influence. Yeah. Um, I do have one other possible um, option for that, which is in... I'm not sure if it's depending on a translation or a, I could I should have read into this more, but I did read it whilst I was doing this research. Mm-hmm. Um, that when the mirror is on the wall, it's magic mirror on the wall, and then there's who's the fairest of them all, or mm-hmm. actually who's the fairest one of all, not who's the fairest of them all. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also instances where the mirror is in a hand, mm-hmm. and then it's mirror mirror in my hand, something something something, who's the fairest in the land, or something like that. Yeah. So there are instances. Um, obviously, Snow White is very old and German. Yeah. Um, is that a Grimm? I Brothers Grimm one? I don't I know. Don't, you don't know. I don't anyway, know. I feel like it's it's an old fairy tale. Mm. Um, but this, that's had plenty of time since 1937 when that film came out to get yep. bastardized in different ways. Um, um, I've got one other example as well that I've just remembered. Of oh this. yeah, go for it. So Quiz me. The last uh, queen, you know, queen, the, uh, the current queen. No, sorry, the the band. Oh, queen. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, yeah, that was the other one that I was going to put out. I do know where you're going with this, but but give it to me anyway. Okay, so the we are the champions. Mm-hmm. How does it end? It does not end with of the world. That is not in the end of the song, but Immaculate. it is in. Thank you. Exactly. However, a lot it of people... is earlier in the song, and it is in their Live Aid performance. There it is. Yep, that's the uh, the end of the song. So the end, the end there. of the song ends in an incomplete cadence, which is yes, why a lot it's of people... horrible to listen to when you listen back to it. Yeah, exactly. Because you which really just want it. <clears throat> a lot of people remember, like they will automatically listen to that song, and they will brain would finish it because they know how yep. that cadence finishes. But there is also that one instance on their live eight performance, live aid performance, not live eight, mm-hmm. where he does finish the actual song, and obviously, which was a obviously a really really famous performance of theirs. Yeah, so people will have heard it. Incredibly, um, but the actual recorded live version, not live version, sorry, studio the, version. The recorded studio version, yeah, yeah, just just ends. Yeah. Um, I think it also helps that the majority of the time that people are listening to that song, it's in a huge group all singing together and you can't actually hear the music. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter what Freddie's saying at that point. You are the band. Yep, exactly. Drunkenly chanting at a football match or something. Yeah, I think that's my um, favourite example. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so sorry I didn't include it. I gave you just trash instead. (laughs) No, I mean you. You included one I'd I'd not seen before, which well, a couple oh, yeah. actually. Um, I nearly caught myself I, out on it. I had to go hunting for these quite a lot because there's a lot of these examples that are, are very American. Like mm. there's, um, did you know that Curious George does or doesn't have a tail? I can't remember what the correct answer is. He does. Couldn't have picture a tail. Curious George. He doesn't have a tail. No, because he's a. That's chimp. the thing. Yeah. Chimps but, don't um, have tails. See, I thought he was a monkey. But I also know nothing about Curious George. Um, so that's, that's no good to me. Um, mm. Did you know that um, there's no such thing as a peanut brand called Jiffy, but there's one called Jiff? Yes. I'm like, cool. That's I, another one. I haven't seen that peanut, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> or that the logo for the clothing company Fruit of the Loom doesn't include a cornucopia. What's a cornucopia? Uh, like a big horn thing. Like, you, you know the image of, like, a, a big wicker horn spilling out with fruit? Mm. Like a cornucopia. Right. Um, it it doesn't have one. To which my response was, mm-hmm. Great. Okay. Well, here's, here's an interesting one for you. Oh, yeah. Looney Tunes. Ah, is Looney Tunes as in the as in the songs, not Looney Tunes as in the cartoons? Exactly. Because it was originally a very musical thing, it was. wasn't it? Um, I will be surprised if you can catch me out in any of these because I did a lot of hunting to find UK specific ones. Um, uh, how do you spell sketches? Without a T. Yeah, I think you might have seen. I'm just on the first one. Are you on the first? Yeah, I would have clicked <laughs> through. There, there's various. Um, it, it's a fun thing to look up yourself um, to to go online. There's a, there's lots of articles with like 40 examples of the Mandela effect. Um, so I've I've picked and chosen what I thought were the more interesting ones out of there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of spelling ones which I didn't want to give you because bless you, you're not the best speller in the world. Hey now, I'm the best. I'm a good <laughs> speller. I'm just a terrible typist. 
<laughs> you are terrible typers for a man who works in IT. Yep. I'm getting, you can't type I'm, for... I'm not getting better. I, mm. Cool. Well, I think um, uh, the... Yeah. Oh, I, I need to show you that video, but it's another good um, uh, Mandela effect thing is, is that internet comment etiquette. It's good. Yeah, I, very... uh, we'll, um, we'll leave, a, leave a link in the, um, in the show notes. We'll, uh, we'll link to that. Um, it's also yeah, fucking hilarious. So Excellent. I love, a, I love a new YouTube recommendation. Oh, yeah. Um, just now I scan through to see if I had anything else to say about this. Oh, yeah, it's mostly just, just like... Um, uh, it is technically, if you're interested in the science, it's an example of the misinformation effect. Right. Um, which is the creation of false memories as a result of interference from other or new information following the processing of information from the event in question, which yeah. we pretty much, we, we've said that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, just, just to put it to bed, um, Shazam is, is Kazam. Yeah. Um, which wasn't the one I was going to say. Uh, the... The most likely example for the um, for the Mandela effect effect of the Mandela. What am I saying here? I'm going to say that one again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've lost all words again. How? Give me give me two seconds. We'll we'll edit this way out. It's okay. The best explanation was the word. Um, the best explanation for. People thinking that Mandela died in prison is mm. probably they're remembering uh, Steve Biko, who was also a South African anti-apartheid activist at the same time as Mandela was arguably a, about as famous or more so. Yeah. Um, as Mandela even died in prison in '77. Um, so there's, as with all of these things, there's a very similar line that gets twisted in your head and it gets created with false memories. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was. Almost certainly Steve Beaker that people remembered um, when they're specifically thinking of Nelson Mandela. Ah, I didn't know that bit, that little bit. That's interesting. Well, there you go. That I just thought that would wrap up the the initial thing that caused it. Is also it's the same. Yep. It's all the same. Yep. It's not a glitch in the matrix. It's not the Illuminati somehow doing something for some reason. No, it's not. It's, it's not. Uh, your brain is dumb. Universes rubbing up against each other, and well, it's just we're just idiots. Everyone or is. it is. Maybe that's just a fun thing to think. That's kind of a... I feel like that's a harmless conspiracy. I'm all up for a harmless conspiracy. Yeah. It's not. To clarify, it's not, and I don't think that. But maybe it is. Make your own choices, but don't. Science is real. How do you spell raccoon, Joe? With two Cs? It is two Cs. Yes! Apparently, ah! that was one example of the Mandela effect that everyone thought it was R A C O O N. They're wrong. Not There's rack, obviously two C's in there. Get out of here. Yeah. You can't beat me on the mess with this. Which leads us neatly on to, and I say this every week, there's no le- neat lead on, there's no good segue. No. Um, there's an awkward pause, and then we say, let's do the next bit. Yeah, there but, is. Which leads us neatly on to our third segment of the podcast. Um, which is uh, this week. This week. This week. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, I was thinking about this after we recorded the last one, mm-hmm. and it had been well, it must have been a good like five days after we'd recorded the last podcast, and then I suddenly thought, oh my god, I've got to think of something again to talk about that I've done in a week. What the hell have I done this week? <laughs> Where have those five days gone? <laughs> Nothing had happened at all. Um, so I'm glad we've had a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but how? T- t- talk to me about your week whilst I take this long drink of water. So how? Talk to me about your week. <laughs> we don't need to include that. I'll start talking you about Moat so you can have that. Do you want a third do you want a third take on that? No. Uh so yeah, I had a pretty busy week. Um mm. started a couple of uh, new video games, which was yeah. was good. Um played started playing Psychonauts for the first time, which is You have, yeah. Which was a game. Um, You're not wrong. Yeah, not sure how I thought about it, but I mean, I can see it's Tim Schafer over and over, all through mm-hmm. and through. Um, so that was good. And then, of course, uh, Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury came out at the uh, yep. end of last week, um, and that was really good. Yeah, stream mm-hmm. that. It was really good fun. Really impressed by it. Yeah. 
Um, give me your give me your thoughts in give me three words for um, Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Um, safe. Okay. New. Mm-hmm. Good. Cool. That that's good enough for me to go off. Yeah. It's yeah, uh. But- Look like a real fun time. Um, I drop by your your streams when you're doing it. Mm. Um, yeah, seems seems like a fun game. I can see the definite kind of the three D world uh, vanilla um, mm. was you can it was definitely the pinnacle of the direction that they they were going with with the three D Mario games. Yes, and I can see why they did a hard U turn on that. Because while yeah. it was while it wasn't necessarily a bad game, mm-hmm. it wasn't that interesting a game. Okay, right. Because it's just Mario. No, it's just Mario. It's just yeah. There's no exploration. There's no real narrative. There's no real depth to it. It was a very superficial experience that was you know wasn't unpleasant and wasn't not fun. Do you feel like it was the natural evolution from the early Mario games? Um, potentially, or a bit of a rehashing. Yeah, I think I think Galaxy Super Mario Galaxy was the right the culmination of that that process. Okay, I, th- I think, maximum three D. Yeah, um, yeah. a more traditional Mario experience, and then three D World. Not play three D Land, so I'm not quite sure. But three D World. Three D Land is it's just Mario. Um, yeah, there's there's just no real depth to it, which I suppose in the olden times there wasn't really that much depth to Super Mario Bros. and all that kind of thing. But gaming no, as it a was whole, 2D. yeah, gaming as a whole has progressed a long way since then. Yeah, um, and I think them going actually, we kind of need to do something a bit more, more, and then Odyssey came along and then doing Odyssey, yeah, and, then, and yeah, and they they did it. They 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 brought up they they caught up with a lot of more yeah um, so Bowser's Fury is it feels like a Super Mario 3D World themed level from Super Mario Odyssey doesn't quite right doesn't, okay yeah doesn't quite handle the same because it's running on the 3D World engine um, yep. but you can see that they've definitely tried to emulate that using the 3D World assets so it's, it's a bit of a bridge yeah and it's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking it. Really enjoying it. Excellent. And Sorry, just blacked out for a second. There. Yeah, yeah, I saw you. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah, not really much. So we obviously, we'll we'll come back to something that happened last night. Um, but what, what have you been up to solo? Oh, yeah. Um, I have um. I'll tell you the most exciting thing that's happened to me in the last week. Mm-hmm. And it is the most exciting thing that's happened to me in a while. Yep. So, there is a mythical bakery in Bristol that I've heard tales of. Okay. That there is a, a bakery that appears in a market near me right. um, on a Saturday morning. And if you go there to the bakery on a Saturday morning, um, they they have a stall there and they do incredible like pastries and things. And specifically, they do... A spiced bun, like a cinnamon bun that is out of this world. Incredible. Yep. I heard about this months ago. Mm-hmm. Months and months ago. And we've we've tried to find it. And every Saturday that we turn up, they're not there. They don't exist. Was but it yeah, we hear effect? that people have been there. This bloody was a Mandela effect. And it it just didn't exist every time we went there. But then we'd hear about people that went to there that day. Right. And had had a spiced bun. And we went there week after week, found a different market that they appeared at, went specifically to that one. Mm-hmm. They weren't there either. Finally found it one day before Christmas. They they were there. Everything was great. Got in the queue, long queue, good bakery. Mm-hmm. Sold out of spice buns. Oh, no. Went there the next weekend, early in the morning. Made sure they were in the queue, in plenty of time. Sold out of spice buns again. They just would not sell the one thing that we really wanted to. And this this is this is a months long thing. Yeah. Um obviously then Christmas happened, lockdown happened, we assumed that that's it. You got you got no more options for 
the spice blends until the world opens up again. Yep. And then we heard tell that they're opening a little little pop up, um, in a, another building on a different road. They're selling out of a window on Saturday mornings from eight o'clock. Right. So this Saturday, we woke up, set a special alarm for seven o'clock on a Saturday morning. The special spice bomb alarm. A special spice bomb alarm. Woke up at seven on seven o'clock. Went to the window of this um, shut down accountants. And got myself a spice bun. And let me tell you, it was incredible. Wow. That was honestly highlight of my year so far, was that spice bun. That's a high bar um, as well. 2021 has been a fantastic year so far. It has. Mm. It's full of um, joys, delights. Mm. But now it's full of spice buns. And um, I'll be going back and I'll be getting one every week. And I'm not going to tell you which it is because I don't want anyone else flooding there. <laughs> this is my private bakery now. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not a hundred percent sure what a spiced bun is. So it's like it's like a cinnamon roll, like a cinnamon bun. You know, you get it's like it's like a paste, a swirly pastry thing. It's covered in cinnamon and sugar. Oh, and it's yeah. It's it badly. It's quite flaky. Um, yeah. Oh, but I imagine know. that, but really beautifully spiced and like about the size of your head. Right. And that's that's the that's what we're dealing with. I'm gonna go on a hunt on Saturday. See if Do I can it. Find it. <laughs> you can see the challenge. I've given you, I've given you enough clues. <laughs> Just look for old defunct accountants. Yeah, that's the one. Well, that was very heartwarming, very wholesome. Uh, it it warmed my heart. Yeah. Should we talk about Nintendo? Let's talk about Nintendo. So obviously we we try and avoid dating, but I mean this was obviously something that we were both interested. We both watched. Um, mm-hmm. The last Friday, last Wednesday, la, last Thursday Wednesday. today, how yeah. it was yeah. yesterday, Wednesday. Last Wednesday was the uh, Nintendo Direct, the big one, the big one, the big one. Sudden announcement, um, a full-length Nintendo Direct. They're not the yeah. one in ages. Nope. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts, Joe? Underwhelmed. Yeah. Strongly underwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, the mm. group chat that we're both we're both a chat ho- uh, both a chat of. We're both a chat of a group chat. Yes, we're bo- both a chat of a group part. Um, mm-hmm. Group chat we're both a part of has been s- just tearing it to pieces, really. Absolutely. Yeah. So it to we pieces. we all watched it together over over Discord and, mm. and chatted about it at the time, but um, it was just announcement after announcement that at best you could go, huh, and at worst it was this looks terrible. Yeah, there were quite a few instances where it was. This looks fucking awful. Yeah. Um, they, I mean, they did an interesting tact of starting off with a new Smash character announcement, which was two people from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is a game that a couple of people might have possibly played and no one was interested in and no one wanted to be part of Smash. Yeah. You mean um, uh, two people out of the group or two people in general? Because I'm pretty sure they are quite popular games. Well... I don't know anyone that's played them. No, fair as, that's a that's a low sample size, but mm. um, I feel like they must be more popular outside of the UK because they've got some of the worst British accents in the voice accent I've ever heard. Yeah, that, there is that. Just yeah. like painful to listen to. Like I don't think I could play those games with the sound on. No. Um, but yeah, like that was that's an immediate set the tone for the event. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of nothing, and then it was just just a lot of little indie games, a lot of nothing. Uh, we got the big Zelda announcement, which is that there's no news. Yep, there's there the no news is good news. I mean, it's better than I'd have liked some news. Yeah, some news would be good. Um, and well, I suppose like, there was some news. There was some news. There's yeah. no news. Yes, the news was that there's no news. Yep, and also Skyward Sword. Yeah, which is cool, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Skyward Sword HD 60 FPS, that's... With optional no motion controls, I've, I'm probably going to get it. Yeah, yeah, same. I'd say it was possibly one of the... I actually may have been the high point of the whole thing for me. Was, was I, that. It was definitely the high point of the thing for me. I, I don't care for Splatoon, which is the little stinger they had at the end. I'm sure mm. pe- people do. People love those games. Um, I don't see the... Um, it doesn't appeal to me particularly mm. as a game series, but I'm sure that will be good. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely get um, get Skyward Sword. 
Um, yeah. If for no other reason, then I um, set myself a challenge um, this year um, in celebration of Zelda's 35th anniversary, which is this Sunday. I am going to aim to play through as many of the Zelda games as possible um, in order of release date. Hmm. So part of what I've been doing this week is set myself up to start doing that because I'm going to do it on stream, which will potentially go terribly. Um, depending on when this, when we get this edited and put up, uh, I'll record a couple of different lines of either I'm really looking forward to it or oh, that went really well or that went really shit. Yeah. Um, you can splice in whichever one of those fits the situation better. Well, I imagine we'll be releasing this this next week, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so by by listening, you've probably um, I, I will have done that. So that that would have been I'll have done my first ever stream. Hmm. Um, which so that'll be fun. I'm ex- I'm jumping on that bandwagon. Exciting stuff. Very excited. It is exciting stuff. Um, so yeah, this this Sunday, uh, this Sunday just gone for you. Um, I've been doing uh, Original Legend of Zelda. I presumably have finished it in one sitting uh, with no assistance. Um, but on the off chance that I haven't, I'm going to be continuing that hopefully as a as a weekly thing and working my way through the series. Wonderful. Um, so I'll be getting Skyward Sword because I've got no other way of playing that. Yeah. And that, that would make a lot of sense for me. What are you going to do for the other 3D Zeldas? I have options. Um, I, have, I have consoles. I have it's going to take a while to get to the 3d ones i think because i've got to work mm. through um zelda which will take a bit of time because i'm doing it without any kind of walkthrough or oh you're um, doing it as as uh as i'm intended. doing it as as originally intended i'm going to give yeah. myself the information that you get from the game manual mm-hmm. um no outside help except for hopefully a, maybe a helpful twitch chat i don't know um and i'm going to like draw my own maps and things and, and do it as legit as possible. So that's presumably going to take a bit of bit of time and effort to work through. But immediately following that is Zelda Two, which so, is isn't isn't that one of the worst? If that doesn't break me, I don't know what will. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to take me a while to get to the 3D ones, so I've got time to figure figure that out exactly how I'm going to do it. Yeah, because um, that would be I think Ocarina would fall as the fourth game. Possibly no, Link's Awakening would be fourth, and then it's Ocarina. Where do uh, where do the oracles lie? I think oracles that's... are after Majora's Mask. Really, that I look, late? I look, yeah, I looked this up earlier. They were um, they were Game Boy Color, but the sixty four was in full swing by then. Wow. Okay. So I, I think you orders Zelda, Zelda Two, Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, the Game Boy version, obviously. Yep. Um, and then. Because then they did Ocarina of Time, but then they immediately went back and did Link, Link's Awakening again on the Game Boy Color. Mm-hmm. And then it was a while before they did the Oracle games after that. Gotcha. Um, by a while, I mean there was like a, a flurry of a few games in a couple of years. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 2000, 2001. Exciting. Exciting stuff. So, um, yeah, I assume I'll work my way through up to Breath of the Wild before the next trailer for Breath of the Wild 2 hits. Yeah. Absolutely. The way things are tracking. Um, yeah, well, on the subject of streaming, um, mm. so I will be uh, streaming Spyro 2 Race with my good friend Joe Wild. Um, yes. Similar sort of thing. So some fr- I uh, will have done the first one by the time this comes out, but we'll yep. be doing it every Friday. Yep. Um, next Saturday, so the Saturday just gone, we'll be doing some Mario Kart. Yeah. So that will have Always happened. a good time. That will have happened. Do you mm. know you can go back and you can rewatch them? Yeah, that's the main thing. You can go back and onto the Twitch and watch these mm. things if you missed it. Um, so next Saturday, mm. uh, I don't know why I'm plugging something. I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. I imagine <laughs> I will, you'll be doing something. I'll be doing something. I probably will be playing some more uh, Bowser's Fury because I haven't played that game since I streamed it. Um, Great. Mm. Look forward to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in that case, we'll, uh, we're, we're both streaming. And, uh, we're both streaming. Well, um, so let, let's lead on to where can we find you on the streams? Yeah. And the everywhere else. Well, uh, yeah, so go, go for it. Where, where, where can we find you, Joe? Uh, so you can find me for, for everyday regular and musical stuff at uh, Joe Goddard Music on YouTube and on Instagram. And uh, for all your gaming needs, I'm launching, of course, as Howard Pringle, Destroyer of Worlds. Um, no, no, no questions needed. 
Um, so that will be at twitch.tv slash hpdow. Mm-hmm. Catchy as anything. I'm good at the cross-branding. The catchiest. <laughs> It'll catch on. Uh, how about yourself, Al? Uh... So uh, you Did can I miss find. A joke? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get what that joke was. I thought that it was a catch on was a pun, but I realised that's just using the word. That's just using the word. <laughs> <laughs> so moving swiftly on, you can find me at everywhere apart from Twitter at uh, Hal Diamond, all one word. Twitter being the odd, odd one out of Hal mm-hmm. underscore Diamond. So that's Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Hal Diamond. Twitter is the odd one out. Hal underscore You'll get that URL one day. One day I'll get it. One day I'll get that Twitch hand, uh, Twitter handle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's our show then. I think that's our show. It's, it's been a good. It's been a good pod as always. Oh no, tell you like. Um, you can as always email us or email our intern pod at yep. pod at classflack dot com. Um, have have you checked emails? Probably not. Have you checked the inbox? I haven't. I can't remember how to sign in. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's it. We, uh, I think we got one. Um, we got uh, one a while back, didn't we? Yeah, one while back. Um, but it was just from. Yeah, it wasn't anything important. It wasn't anything fun. Nothing fun at all. So, but yeah, please email us. We'd love to please read email your emails. Us. And next, I'm going to check it now after we get off the podcast. So that next podcast, if you've emailed us, or maybe have, or maybe haven't, I will read it. <laughs> or not. We promise that we will read every single email. I'm not going to make that promise, actually. Cut that out. Yeah, we'll read every single email that is not written that by That is appropriate. Computer. Yes. Mm-hmm. All and right, appropriate. We're in... Yeah. Uh, with that, I'll see you. Uh, see you next time we do this. Yeah. Wait, see me? No, you'll see no, wait, me. I'll see. You'll see I'll, me on Saturday. I'll see you on Saturday, and I'll yeah. probably watch you streams. This was a bad sign off, Hal. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>